Do you want to experience maximum success when it comes to trout trolling? If you do, integrate trolling flies into your arsenal. Go on over to fishhuntshoot.com and pick up one of Cal Kellogg's signature series trolling fly kits today and you'll be yelling fish on tomorrow. Oh, two big rainbows in the net. Look at that. <laughs> wow. Whew. Hey guys, Cal Kellogg here. I want to give a shout out to my buddy Dwayne up in Chico, California. He had a, had a viewer question for us. I'm going to answer his question in just a second. But Dwayne got into kayak fishing because of this channel. He found a feel-free kayak. I think he found it on eBay. Um, a paddle kayak. He picked that kayak up. He got addicted to kayak fishing. Six months later, he got rid of that kayak and he got himself a full-blown brand new Hobie Compass pedal drive kayak and uh, he is loving life. He's equipping it. He just got a downrigger. He's gotten all kinds of rods. He's buying all kinds of toys. He's all excited about it. And he asked me to recommend a net or he asked me, you know, what do you look for in a net? And he wants to fish for trout and salmon like I do, but he wants to fish for some bass and other species too. So I'm going to use this opportunity to give a review of the net I've been using. Got no skin in this game. I paid full price for this net. So, but I do want to give a review of the net, show you what I'm using, and then I'll talk about what attributes I would strongly suggest you look for when you go out and buy a net. Now, you guys have seen this net on the channel a bunch. This is my, my Ego slider net. It slides up and down. This net is three years old, um, still going strong. It's been dropped, kicked, stepped on, dropped in the water, slid off the top of my truck. It's been around and it still works pretty darn well. It's still pretty darn solid. When you see me out in the kayak with this net, it is slid out to maximum length 99% of the time. And uh, if you're looking for a net, the Ego Series nets, they're great nets. There's a lot of good nets on the market. I like this one. It's cool. It hasn't let me down yet. Three years of service. So got more than my money's worth out of it. But first, I would get as long a handle on my net as I possibly could. And a, a telescoping net like this is nice because it, it allows you to store it. When this one's scoped out full length, I think it's 60 inches long. And uh, that length is important to me. When you've got a big fish on the line, a lot of times when they boil up by the boat, they might be lightly hooked. I want to net them as soon as possible because you might only get one shot at them. Big fish have a way of getting away and I want to be able to reach out and get that fish. The net you see me using on the guide boat, the FHS pontoon boat, that net is nine feet long. And that's why it's got such a long handle. I want to be able to reach out and net a trophy fish at the absolute first opportunity I have to get the fish in the net. I wouldn't want to have this net on the guide boat and uh, here comes the truck, I'll be right back. There goes the truck, okay. As I was saying, I wouldn't want to have this net on the guide boat because I'm going to have to get a fish, you know, right there at handshaking range to get it in the net. And that's just not the most efficient way to land fish or to land big fish. So get as long a net as you can handle, preferably a net that has a telescoping handle because it makes them easier to transport to and from your fishing spot. Um, the other thing, you're out in a kayak, tether your net. I've got a nice long tether on the net here. Um, you always want your net tethered because when you're fighting a fish, sometimes the fish will run and you've got the net. You've seen me doing it. I'm fighting a fish. I've got the net under my arm. Sometimes the net will fall in the water and, and get away from you and you don't want to lose your net. A good net's going to cost you 80, 90 bucks minimum. So the last thing you want to do is lose your net. So tether your net if you're out in a kayak. Um, you'll notice my net has rubber mesh and I think that's it's not just important, it's a must have for me for a couple reasons. One, if you're using any kind of treble hook and you get it in a net like this and the fish rolls, you've got a mess that's gonna take you five or 10 minutes to untangle and get back in the water. Remember, wasted minutes on the water cost you fish. Minutes add up to hours over the course of the season and you're spending time on the water when you're messing with your net, you don't have your bait in the water, you're missing opportunities. So this net, net like this, is actually gonna help you catch more fish because you're not gonna be dealing with a big tangle in the net. So those old school nylon mesh nets, they're going out of style for a reason. Most guys I know, most serious guys I know, 
they're going with the rubber. Second reason to go with rubber when you're fishing for, well, pretty much anything, but especially trout and salmon, if you're gonna release a fish, the rubber mesh is just a lot easier on the fish. It doesn't knock off as many scales. It doesn't harm the fish as much. It's just a lot easier on the fish, makes them a lot more releasable. Um, final aspect of nets, okay? I've heard this story dozens of times over the years. I was out fishing for blank, Kel, and I caught this big blank and I couldn't get it in a net. Notoriously, this happens to river salmon guys and sturgeon guys. River salmon guys, they'll be out there, they'll have their striper net and they'll catch a 30 or 40 pound salmon and they'll get it up and that fish is 40 inches long, 16 inches wide, and they can't get it in the net. And sometimes they lose the fish, sometimes they land it, but they struggle because they underestimated the size of the fish they were gonna catch. Always have a net with a hoop that's bigger than the fish you anticipate catching. Most of the trout we're gonna catch are gonna be pan size. They're gonna be 12, 14, 15 inches long, but <clears throat> you need a net like this with a, a big hoop and a deep basket that you can scoop a seven, eight, nine, 10, 12 pound trout in because once in a while, you're gonna hook a big bruiser like that and you don't wanna have a net that's you know too small. So think about that. Get a net that's bigger than you think you'll need. Get a net with a nice long handle, preferably a telescoping handle. Go with the rubber mesh and make sure it's got a fairly deep basket because there's nothing as frustrating as getting a fish in the net and having them get back out. That's like that's like when you were a kid, you know, playing basketball and you, you throw that one up there and it, it'd go in, it looks like it's gonna be a swish and it'd go like da -da 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 inside the rim and pop back out. You don't want that. You want him to get in there and stay in there. And that's what a, a, deep, a deep basket on that net will do for you. Um, final considerations. Always inspect your net. Make sure it's in perfect operating condition. If it starts getting frayed, starts getting holes, looks worn, whatever, replace the net because you're gonna hook a big fish. You're gonna get that fish in the net. The net's gonna give way. The fish is gonna fall through. You're gonna lose the fish and you're gonna be like, oh, I noticed that was frayed, but I didn't change it. Don't be that guy. And one thing I really like about this net, and I, I'm not a net expert, I haven't looked at all the nets on the market, but one thing I really like about this net, and I would, I would advise you to get, see how, I'm, I'm holding this pretty level here. Notice this step up action in the net. That means when I put it in the water, I'm up above the fish over there, this part can be parallel with the water, but it's still kind of angling down. That's a small thing, but I, I like this little angle in the net. It does make a difference when you're sliding a fish into the net. Now, netting fish out of a kayak, that's a whole nother subject. It takes a little bit of finesse. It takes a little knack. It doesn't seem like it until you're actually out in the kayak and you hook a big fish and you're trying to net it. But that's another subject for another time. That's you know, my thoughts on nets. The ego nets, can't go wrong with them. They're rugged, they're dependable. They're awesome. There's a lot of rugged, dependable nets on the market. So, you know, figure out what brand you like. Go with a big hoop, deep basket, and rubber mesh telescoping handle. Get the hoop and the handle. Get the hoop bigger than you think you're gonna need and get the handle longer than you think you're gonna need. You know, run the maximum length of, of handle and you're gonna be a happy camper. That's my little talk about nets. I'm out of here. I will catch you later, Dwayne. I'll catch everybody later. If you're looking for gear, not nets, but pretty much everything else, go on over to Fish Hunt Shoot dot com and uh, you can check out my full array of tackle i want to thank you guys for all the support and i will see you next time right here on youtube i'm kel kellogg you have a great day